out here in Rec Hall. It is an unfriendly environment to be playing if you are the opponent of the Penn State Nittany Lions. And this fan base has been waiting for a Big Ten title chance for many years now. They last won it in 2018 on the side of Penn State. Nebraska, meanwhile, looking to go back to back and go unbeaten in the Big Ten. How masterful of a performance would that be as Big Red travels nicely for the Nebraska Cornhuskers? It would be absolutely insane to go undefeated in Big Ten play. Head coach John Cook says, the Big Ten title is tougher to win than a national title, which tells you exactly how tough it's been from a coach that has won multiple himself. I think Russ Rose might have something to say about that, given his prowess at the Big Ten title, but you're right. In, in today's Big Ten landscape, Emily, that is uncharted territory. Surely they have two matches left, and this is no easy feat against Penn State here tonight, but what Nebraska volleyball has accomplished this season is unmatched. Bergen Riley will be our first server over on the side of Nebraska. Nebraska serve receive will be tested. A side of Penn State, a lot of good defense and passers on both sides. Jillian Grimes manning the middle. Deep to the corner, goes Bergen and there's a nice cut from Trammell, it's alive. Beeson sends it over. And out of system ball for Merzik, high hands she goes. Bergen Riley out to the pen, predictable set. And that one's dug up on the side of Penn State. As he starts to the pin again, just Merzik testing the middle. What a dig by Bergen Riley early. Jillian Grimes passes it on dime. Back it goes. Jurevicious is covered by Jillian Grimes. What a moment. Harper sends it up. And Beeston goes big down the line, looking for the touch. No dice. Penn State gets the opening point. Point one of the match, and we already yeah. see this Big Ten classic dogfight. Insane defense on either side. This is what it's going to take to win a title. You have to outlast your opponent and score 75 points. Give some loves to the, the Littles. Jillian Grimes with the coverage ball and out to the pin. Nebraska in some trouble early. Is he start now? Goes to the pin. Merzik early off the hands, and no one can stop her yet. Nebraska has to defend Jess Merzik well tonight if they want to have any success. The offense runs through Merzik on the outside. If Nebraska can get touches and slow her down, it'll be great for the Huskers. Jillian Grimes looking to continue a two-point run to start for Penn State. That's a nasty serve. Lexi Rodriguez keeps it alive, but barely. Penn State back in a perfect position to the middle. It goes to the former Cornhusker. Maggie Mendelssohn out of the middle and loaded up. Have another look at this one. Penn State is serving incredibly well. That's knocking Nebraska out of system, forcing them into chaotic situations. Free balls on Penn State's side, they're gonna put it down nearly every time. The big serve from Grimes on a dime though from Lexi Rodriguez, and what a dig early from Grimes and buried it. Caroline Juravicious on the pin. What a dig, gotta give love to Grimes the little. Jillian Grimes is working overtime in the backcourt for Penn State, both on the service line, putting in bullets and picking stuff up that you think is gonna drop. She is elite tonight so far. Jurevicious putting a little bit of extra into that against her former team. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Two former Cornhuskers getting kills already to start for Penn State. That one is tracked down. Penn State has all the momentum on their side. Rodriguez handles a perfect pass. Landfair goes big off the hands. Thought she got the touch she wanted. No. Such touch seen from our line judges, and John Cook will challenge that right away. Landfair was sure she got it, so that is currently in contesting, and there's John Cook in his 25th season at Nebraska. Has an overall win percentage the calls out, no touch. of 877. Nebraska's challenging, there was a touch. And there's a look of the Hall of Famer, John Cook, what he is accomplished with this program this season, especially on a historical run. Four national championships to his name, 11 Final Fours, 13 conference championships. What do you see there, Emily? Difficult to tell from that angle whether it went off of Merzik or not. This might be a better look at it, seeing if there's any finger bent backward. I don't know if I see concrete evidence of a touch, though. Yeah, I see it there. That left pinky and Merzik based on that. It looks like it's been backward just a little bit. That's a great challenge taken. Yeah, John Cook usually knows. And Taylor Lanfair thought she saw it best, and she did. We'll see what the 
ultimate verdict is, but what a start so far. Penn State relying on the seventh man. That is the crowd. And what a great test for both sides heading into the, the NCAA tournament. One moment. After review, there was a touch by the Penn State blocker. Nebraska gets the point and will retain their challenge. As Joseph Gustafson, our second referee for this match, and Nebraska gets what they wanted out of that sequence. A side out and a point, their first of set number one. That tells you just how important every point is going to be because it's still so early on in the match yet. John Cook was confident about taking that challenge early on and gets to keep it. 28-1 and one record for Nebraska. Only one loss this season coming to SMU. Back to serve now, Olivia Mauk. Down it goes. Rebecca Alec is monstrous in the middle as well. That started from the service line. Olivia Mauk putting in a bullet from the end line, forcing Penn State out of system, and the front line is just ready for that overpass to eat it up. Now back to serve again. Look out for a jump floater. Exploiting the seams. Merzik handles it, though. Mendelssohn in the middle again. Bergen Riley loads up off the 10-foot line. Dug up by Izzy Stark. Penn State still alive. Full scramble. Nebraska in control. Bergen Riley to the middle. Rebecca Alec finding her way in a chaotic situation. Penn State needs to do a better job if they're sending a down ball, putting it on the center in the backcourt, putting it right to middle back to the DS isn't going to work. Bergen Riley's going to get up to the net and run her middle in that situation. The ball has to be better executed to right back on Penn State's side. Nice pass for Penn State. Merzik gets stopped by the one-on-one -on -one block. Beeson through the seam it goes. Drew a vicious with a monstrous start. Two kills for the former Cornhuskers. We take a look now at Katie Schumacher calling her third season at Penn State and an 802 win percentage to match, battling breast cancer and showing up daily for her family and her girls. Great to see her at the bench for Penn State. Rebecca Alec again to the corner. Bergen Riley has a lot of assets at the net. It's so difficult because of the balance that Nebraska runs with. When they get their middles involved, they can be a difference maker. Rebecca Alec went off for 10 kills, hitting nearly 700 against Wisconsin the other night. Penn State has to defend the middle just a little bit better. Lexi Rodriguez back to serve. Deep float serve handled nicely by Penn State. Stark getting involved in the offense, and that ball's still alive. That scrappy defense for Nebraska is Kesky. Merzik gets blocked again. Out to the other pin. Mendelssohn swings out and gets that ball through a near brick wall of Nebraska. Penn State's having a lot of success on the right side of the court, whether it's the middle running a slide attack behind the setter or on the right side attack, really trying to exploit that left side block for Nebraska, and it's working so far for the Nittany Lions. That block of Andy Jackson and Harper Murray is a dangerous sight to see. Smart play by Penn State to swing. Mendelssohn out to the pin. Bergen Riley in a perfect situation. Merritt Beeson loads up, and Cameron Hanna jumps into the play. Merzik fires it out of the back row. Riley on defense, out of system, and Harper Murray lights one home off the fingers. Great swing from Harper Murray up front, identifying the double block in front of her, not going right into it, but using the hands to go right over it and tool it out of bounds. Harper Murray, the sophomore out of Ann Arbor, Michigan. Merritt Beeson back to serve. She's a senior. She was emotional after their senior night victory. How Nebraska volleyball has changed the trajectory of her life. And Cameron Hanna loads up big. It's wide. Nebraska ties it up at six early. On Mary Beeson, I mean, what a better leader to have for this team. She came in last season in January and right away was named a captain. That tells you just how good of a leader Beeson is. Yeah, she said she lost that love for the game ahead of coming to Nebraska. Found it. Found Merritt again in Lincoln. What a serve from Merritt Beeson to match. Izzy Stark is physical. You talked about it in the open. She gets denied there. A little too tight of a pass. You're either feeling pressure or applying pressure. Nebraska's doing a good job flipping the script. They felt a lot of pressure through the first five points. Since then, they have taken control and kept the pressure on the Nittany Lions. Merritt Beeson, one of the best servers on the team, finding a new target this time, going cross court, drops it in short. What a serve, what a get on serve receive. It pays off. Mendelssohn pays it off for Penn State. That was a phenomenal serve from Beeson, but an even better pass on Penn State side. They're getting worked short and deep, and the back row just came up to play this perfectly. That allowed the middle to get involved. Ava Felduto, the freshman 
out of Elmhurst, Illinois, with a great pass flying out of the middle. Back to serve now for Penn State, Quinn Menger, one of the captains of this team. Deep float serve, Nebraska handles it. Bergen Riley wins the middle through the back. It's Andy Jackson who gets the kill. She is so hard to stop. Andy Jackson is lethal off the slide attack. Riley will get it going as often as possible. Even within 10 feet of the net, she'll still run that ball. Katie Schumacher Colley, a former two-time All-American for Penn State, also a member of the 1999 National Championship team here, has a lot of history carrying the torch of Russ Rose. Another nice serve by Nebraska, getting Penn State out of system and great spot for Jess Merzik, very smart. Felduto with the dig, Stark out wide. Cameron Hanna denied and slowed down. Bergen Riley kicks it to the pin. And that one's dug up by Penn State. A little high and handled by Grimes into the block. Cameron Hanna denied by the Nebraska block once again. Nebraska's defense is making it so difficult for Penn State to put balls down. And that defense is actually modeled off of Penn State. Coach Cook talks about how he wants his defense to be the best in the country in attitude, effort, and mindset. And that's modeled off the Russ Rose defense yes. from back in the day. So much history for this Penn State program, for both programs. That's why it's so much fun to watch this matchup in the grand finale in the Big Ten season. We're truly spoiled to have these two heavyweights in the same conference battling it out for a title here tonight. I mean, we need to find out who the schedule makers are and just send them <laughs> flowers. I think every Big Ten fan does because this is exactly what we wanted on the penultimate night of the season. Izzy Stark, the freshman center, back to serve Nebraska. Landfair. A little bit off with the timing, so Penn State runs the middle. What a dig in the back row. Laney Choboy kicks up the offense for Nebraska, and that's why they're dangerous. We know about the offense for Nebraska, but it is hard to get kills against this team. Check out this up from Choboy. Just when you think the ball is down, she flies around the court to get a one-handed up. This is what makes Nebraska's defense so tough. In the backcourt, they have so many players that are game changers. Laney Choboy out of Raleigh, North Carolina. Sophomore defensive specialist, or with the serve. And there's Trammell. They need a big performance out of her in the middle tonight to hang against Nebraska. Both Maggie Mendelson and Taylor Trammell, the middles for Penn State, have done a phenomenal job staying involved in this offense. The pass has allowed that to happen, Penn State handling it pretty well. But both those players in the middle have to be big tonight against a good block of Nebraska. Cameron Hanna back to serve. Deep float serving coming. Harper Murray struggled to handle it. Taylor Lanfair says, no problem, I got your back. I'll put this one down deep to the corner. Beautiful swing from Lanfair, seeing where the block was and going right into the seam that she saw open. Almost a mishandled pass for Murray, but Riley is still able to get her hands on that. Bergen Riley back to serve now for Nebraska. Jocelyn Nathan checking in to the Penn State lineup and serve receive. Merzik exploited and serve receive. Great dig by Harper Murray. And Beeson goes deep, looks for the touch. It's deep, and she feels robbed by the call. Merritt Beeson looking to the bench to John Cook to say she thought she saw a, a touch. And we might have our second challenge. No, we don't. Thought about it. Jillian Grimes back to serve now for Penn State. She's been scrappy in the backcourt, though. Nebraska keeping the ball away from her. Out of system now for Nebraska. Full scramble. Now Penn State in a perfect situation. One-on-one, -on -one, Jura Vicious loading up with purpose. Such a high IQ play from Izzy Stark, the freshman. Beeson, who's playing left front for Nebraska in this rotation. It's a scramble play. She's not back in time. Stark identifies that and gets the ball to the hitter in her zone. Jura Vicious. Father was a wide receiver here at Penn State, 10-year NFL veteran as well. Bergen Riley with another perfect pass. Riley again out to the pin, spreading the offense. And that one's dug up by Jess Merzik. Back out to the pin. Back at you to Beeson. One-handed set. Nobody's home for Bergen Riley. Penn State takes a one-point lead. Just a little misconnect from Rebe Rebecca Alec and Bergen Riley. Doesn't happen too often. Watch Riley to go back to her on a good pass to shore that up and give her hitter some confidence. Grimes back to serve again, picking on Rodriguez. Perhaps trying to exploit the angle, and what a grab from Grimes again. Rodriguez puts Bergen Riley in a perfect situation. It's Rebecca Alec, and when Nebraska is rolling in a dime pass situation, they cannot be stopped.
I love the decision of Riley to go back to Rebecca Alec on this set. But look at this Grimes up, just laying out for this ball. It's those split second decisions that as a libero, you have to have making those fast movements. Grimes was named the Big Ten Defensive Player of the Week on Monday for the first time in her career. She doesn't get a lot of credit, but she deserves it. She is an excellent libero. That's wide for Jess Merzik, Nebraska. Takes back the one-point lead. Olivia Malk back to serve. Another scrappy defender. I love seeing the defense on both sides jockeying out against two prolific offenses. Merzik handles the serve, and Jura Vicious takes another kill. Harper Murray looks a little frustrated. It's a back and forth battle right now. Both teams siding out at a pretty good clip because the passing has been great. It's been difficult for either team to go on a run back there. Four kills to start the night for Caroline Jura Vicious, the former Cornhusker. She redshirted in 2023 at Nebraska to be a part of their top recruiting class. That ball is wide, and oh, there is a net violation called on Nebraska. The call being that Harper Murray stepped her foot under the net, so a center line violation, it seemed, just coming down. Here's another look at it. So that whole foot has to be on the other side, which it is, and also a net call, so double whammy. Merritt Beeson, such a physical presence on the pin, gets it down, ties it back up at 14. Nebraska is so difficult to stop because of this balanced offense. In good situations, there are oftentimes four hitters that could get the ball, and Beeson was left one-on-one -on -one because of that. Lexi Rodriguez back to serve. Perfect pass for Penn State again. Mendelssohn blowing up Rodriguez down the line, and she gets it done. Castle Nathan with a dime of a pass for Penn State. A one-point lead for Penn State looking for their 18th. The success is brought to you by State Farm Nebraska leading the way with seven top 10 wins. And talk about strength of schedule, Penn State pretty battle-tested too, Emily. Both teams incredibly battle-tested. That's what they wanted to do when they formed their schedule headed into the postseason because a tough schedule prepares you for what you're going to see in December. Penn State taking over a one-point lead. Jess Merzik looking to extend that, and a great serve through the seam. Harper Murray in some trouble. Double block, it goes down. Nebraska relies on Merritt Beeson on the pin. She gets it up, and Nebraska. Mendelssohn, the former Huskers, are going at it against their former team. Penn State is taking advantage of easy balls on Nebraska's side. If the Huskers are going to give them easy roll shots, Penn State is going to transition them. A beautiful ball pushed all the way up at the net. That gets the middle going. Five kills for Maggie Mendelssohn, four kills for Caroline Juravicious. Just one kill for Merzik and Trammell. You're looking at some chaos on the side of Nebraska now as the service prowess of Jess Merzik ticks up. Penn State's doing a good job putting in service pressure and hitting it really well in the seams, forcing the service team on the other side to talk about it. Merzik loading up again. That one is wide. Aggressive serving is what you need, though, against a team like Nebraska, because when they're in system, good luck. You have to serve tough, and that's a miss that you're okay with from Merzik, barely sending it out of bounds, but still giving the uh, opposing team the opportunity to play it. Merritt Beeson back to serve. She was also the number one overall selection in Monday's Pro Volleyball Federation draft. Drafted by Omaha. And what a play by Izzy Stark, the freshman. Tight to the net, no problem. You would never know Izzy Stark as a freshman by how she plays. She's so situationally aware. Stark knows when to dump and when to do it. This was a perfect opportunity to not send it where the block was, but go right behind her for the point. Three-point swing now over to the Nittany Lions. Menger back to serve Izzy Stark in the front row. Look out for her as an offensive threat now to keep the block honest for Nebraska. Little Tyneberg and Riley handles it off of the hands. Penn State digs it up. Out to the pin, Cameron Hanna has been quiet tonight. Denied again. She gets another try. And that somehow finds its way through a two-woman block. What a swing from Cameron Hanna, barely sneaking this ball past and clipping the sideline, just putting it in the perfect spot. Nebraska finds themselves in their biggest hole of set number one. Down four, it's all Penn State in set number one.
We're Mizuho. Sound familiar? Backing the company battling eye diseases? Mizuho was there. Financing one of the pharma companies, revolutionizing weight loss? That was us, too. Anywhere you need a corporate and investment bank, we're there. Mizuho Americas. When you automate sales tax with Avalara, you don't have to worry about things like changing tax rates or filing returns. Avalara. Precise designs, subtle curves, curated upgrades, elevated design for thoughtful living. Thuma. This is Fubo. It's a better way to watch live news, shows, and sports without cable. Watch multiple games at once with MultiView. Start watching at FuboTV.com. Then shade off to a hot start in set number one. Some notable transfers, i.e. their entire starting line of the transfer portal has certainly made things interesting for all teams across the board, Emily. Katie schumacher Collie has done such a great job bringing people into this program at, that are already at a high level, but then also elevating their game even further. She develops them as phenomenal players, and two that have done especially well tonight, Caroline Jurevich is the opposite, and Maggie Mendelssohn in the middle. They are outstanding right now, both hitting over 800 and doing it against their former team in Nebraska. That's got to feel good. you got to get more amped up for this one, whether you say you are or not. These two have combined for nine kills, and the rest of the team has four to explain the dominance. You think they're a little motivated against their former team? I'd say so. Also vying for a Big Ten title, more importantly. Menger back to serve again, and Harbor Murray in some trouble on the pass. Get to bail herself out. She sends in a roll shot dug up by Penn State. Feldudo, Jess Merzik in the back row. Bergen Riley goes back to Harper Murray, who is denied. She covers herself. Lexi Rodriguez jumps into the play to save it. Stark goes to the middle, and no dice. Taylor Trammell gobbled up by the Nebraska block. Really good read from Harper Murray on this play, knowing when to help with the middle and when to not. This was such a good job identifying this middle set on a two-hitter rotation. She has to stay with the middle on a quick, and they shut it down easily. Harper Murray leads the team with over three kills per set and 27 service aces so far. This year, sensational talent. Just a sophomore, too. Back to serve now for the Cornhuskers. Stark uses the back row. It's Merzik dug up by Lexi Rodriguez. Bergen Riley goes to the pin. Taylor Landfair dug up by the scrappy Jillian Grimes. Cameron Hanna repays the favorites. Lexi Rodriguez. Libero on libero crime here in Happy Valley. Grimes in the back row. Jess Merzik is denied. That ball was not touched by the block of Nebraska. I don't believe anyway they play on. It was called a touch. Don't believe anyone got it. That's why you have to play through the whistle. You never know when it's going to come. Maybe a ref misses something. Maybe they didn't. But you have to stay in the play until you hear that whistle blown. Timeout called by Penn State now to halt the momentum on the side of Nebraska. What is currently changing the tide a bit on the side of Nebraska when they were in a bit of a scramble there uh, uh, with Penn State? having them on the ropes. Nebraska's keeping the pressure on Penn State. They're doing a better job. Any matches won in a row. Penn State is now brought back to that greatness, and that's because Katie schumacher Colley has done a phenomenal job with this program. Yeah, 17 Big Ten titles on the side of Penn State. That's no easy feat. They'd love to get back to their winning ways, though, here tonight with a chance to do that. Bergen Riley goes back to Andy Jackson, who slaps it cross court. Beautiful swing. There's been a few situations where Riley could have gotten Jackson going, but didn't. But what that allowed was Jackson to have a seam in the block when Bergen Riley did get her going. A massive seam for her to put this ball down through. Harper Murray back to serve for the Cornhuskers, looking to tie it up here. Bit of a run. Merzik looking to end the run. She doesn't. Tie set. 19 apiece. Nebraska's defending Merzik very well, forcing them in situations to set her when they don't necessarily want to. And Merzik right now hitting negative. Big pass on the line here for Penn State. Momentum swinging point. Jess Merzik nails it. Cameron Hanna 
gets in a split block situation, and that is the beauty of a perfect pass, Emily. Huge for Merzik to bounce back as well. Misses the swing, but then nails the pass right away. That's why you have to have a 10-second memory in volleyball. You have to flush the last point and think about the next one coming. It's a nice run, though, by Harper Murray to get Nebraska back into this set. Easy Stark goes cross-court. Harper Murray has been their target on serve-receive. That seems to be a winning strategy for them so far for Penn State. Penn State serving the seams really well that time, going to the left shoulder of Harper Murray, forcing that near overpass. Riley trying to take it over, just missing. This is where both teams have to be good. In the red zone from here on out, no more mistakes. Murray again the target. Lexi Rodriguez tracks it down. Free ball situation, and wow, what a way to put that one into a scramble on the side of Penn State. Denied in a free ball situation. Now the trouble brews for Penn State. Doesn't matter. Jura Vicious bails them out. Her fifth kill of the set. Jura Vicious has been phenomenal tonight. This is a player that can sometimes be hot or cold, and when she is on, she is scary up front. Second timeout called of the set for Nebraska trying to cool off Penn State who's in the closing stretch. They need three and set number one is theirs. How about this fantastic atmosphere to start? And in terms of the significance of what a match win tonight would mean, with regards to the big picture, Emily, how would you explain that? It's not just a Big Ten title on the line. For Penn State, they're trying to host, meaning they're getting one of four top seeds for the NCAA tournament. Here's how it's playing out right now. There are four teams that are still in contention for the last two spots. Pitt and Nebraska are pretty much a lock for having number one and number two, but these four are playing it out for those three and four spots. Louisville right now in a good position. Five wins against top ten teams. No bad losses on their end. Stanford, although they have three top ten wins, they do have a loss to Miami, who is low in the RPI. Penn State, two top wins against top 10 teams, but they have no bad losses either, only being Pitt and Wisconsin. And Creighton, although they don't have any top 10 wins, their only losses were to Nebraska and Louisville in five sets. These are the four teams in contention for two spots. A win for the Nittany Lions would make sure that they're hosting for regionals. And another layer to that storyline, Em, is that Louisville plays Stanford tomorrow night. So keep an eye on that result as well and how that can shake things up. Certainly going to have an effect on it. Headed into tonight, I would have said Penn State would probably still be in a good position to host even if they do lose to Nebraska. But that match tomorrow with Stanford and Louisville is going to throw a wrench in all that potentially. A lot on the line here for both sides. Penn State back to serve, it's Izzy Stark. What a pass for Nebraska, back row locked and loaded. Harper Murray demands that she got the touch. She is demanding that John Cook challenges the touch. And that's where we land. Joseph Gustafson here. The original here. call is out, no touch. Nebraska's challenging, there was a touch. All the Nebraska players seemed pretty confident right when that ball ended that there was a touch on that, and that shows how much trust that John Cook has in his team. Here's a get that look at it. Normally looking for a finger bent backwards, change of direction on the ball. Huh, not sure I see it that time. From that look, from this look, I don't see a touch. Only thing that looks maybe suspicious is that right pointer finger in the shot of Taylor Trammell, but otherwise, I don't see a finger bending backwards. Yeah, potentially that right finger, but it has to be 100% positive one way or another to confirm or reverse it. I don't see it, not on that angle. The right hand of Trammell, it's difficult to tell whether it does touch that index finger. I don't know if it's enough evidence one way or the other based on the looks that we're seeing, but they also have looks that we do not see, so they may have a clearer view one way or the other. John Cook was almost reluctant to throw up the green card, it appeared. I don't know if he saw something that we did it on his way to the green card, but it's gonna be a tough one either way and a crucial momentum swinging point no matter what way you land it. We're either at 23-19 or 22-20, here's Joseph. After review, the call is confirmed. There was no touch. Penn State gets the point and Nebraska loses a challenge.
23-19, and the crowd goes wild. Inside rec hall. Now Nebraska down to just one challenge for the rest of the match, unless we go to a fifth set where they would get an additional one. Yeah, costly challenge there, and that could explain the look on John Cook's face on his way to challenge Harper Murray in some serve receive trouble again. Nebraska loading up on the pin. Izzy Stark goes back to Jurevicius. Why not feed the hot hand? It does not work that time. This is where Nebraska has to dial it in, especially defensively. They have to keep the pressure on Penn State, and the defense has to do work and lock in from here on out. Back to serve for the Cornhuskers. Kennedy Orr, senior out of Egan, Minnesota. Nice deep float serve. Hannah pushes Stark way out to the pin. Jura Vicious with a no block situation. Nowhere to go though. Taylor Landfair loads up. And Penn State still alive. Merzik throws it up to Jura Vicious again. And it's Grimes there for the coverage. Cameron Hannah on the opposite. Goes down the line. It's good. Penn State earns a set point there. Penn State turning defense into offense. Jillian Grimes with another impressive up laying out for this one. And just finding a way to will past that block is Cameron Hanna. Cameron Hanna back to serve. Set point in her hands. It's deep to the corner. Nebraska still alive. Gutsy play from the setter. She pulls that out of her pocket late in sets. We saw her do it in the Wisconsin match last week. This time going right over the libero to the corner. Really smart shot from Riley in a pivotal moment. And now it is Bergen Riley back to serve after a gutsy play. And she knew when to do it. Sophomore setter sensation. Will try to carve out a run here for Nebraska. Grimes puts it on a dime. Merzik buries it. And set number one on the side of Penn State. Penn State gutted that one out. When it mattered the most, they made the plays. It was tied up six points ago. They found a way to do it in the stretch in the red zone. That's what it takes to win a Big Ten title. The Nittany Lions are battling for a, at least a share of the Big Ten title tonight. They're one set closer. We'll be right back with more from Happy Valley. Nebraska go into Wisconsin and end up sweeping them and was probably the loudest matchup that Nebraska had been in that year and they found a way to get it done very fast they're not rattled by these big environments expect Nebraska to come out and make adjustments especially on serve receive because that broke down late yeah Harper Murray to me was the target for Penn State she's starting and serve receive in that back left position keep an eye on that it's Jocelyn Nathan back to serve and right to Lexi Rodriguez it goes. Harper Murray buries it, not the target. Lexi Rodriguez in service seat. Nebraska needs more production out of Harper Murray and Mayor Beeson on the right side. Both players hitting negative through that first set. Normally the players that they rely on the most. Bradley has to get them in better positions. Rodriguez back to serve now for the Cornhuskers. Will she where she targets? It's Grimes with a pass out of system. What a serve by Rodriguez. And Juravicious begs for a touch. She is very confident, as is Katie Schumacher Colley. Throws up the green card. Seeing that live, it sounded like there was a touch. Penn State looking pretty confident about it as well. The original call is out, no touch point. Nebraska, Penn State is challenging. There was a touch. Joseph Gustafson, a busy man tonight. <laughs> And we'll take a closer look at it as soon as we have it. Here it is. Mm. Based on that, it doesn't look like it's touching hands. It would be that right hand of Harper Murray, 27 in black, potentially. I see the ball maybe change. Ah, it's too close to tell. Based on that angle, it doesn't look like there's enough evidence yeah. either way. This one could be a bit more clear. I don't see one there either. But to your point earlier, I thought I heard one live courtside here at Rec Hall. See that index finger of Harper Murray. It's a 
little bit tough to tell, though. The spin of the ball doesn't change, which is sometimes an indication as well. Yeah, and nor does the trajectory of the ball change either. So I don't think this one's going to be overturned. But they do have looks that we don't. So based on those, it doesn't seem like there's enough either way. They might see something we don't. So far, Penn State to me looks like a confident group, fearless against one of the best teams in the country in Nebraska. One moment, here's Joseph. After review, the call is confirmed. There was no touch. Nebraska keeps the point. Penn State loses a challenge. And this is why head coaches are very hesitant to challenge on touch calls because sometimes it's just so difficult to tell. Yeah. If you're a player, you really need to be 100% positive that that ball has been touched if you're going to tell your coach to challenge it. And even if so, it feels yeah. like it needs to be an obvious touch. If it's just barely clipping, I don't know if that's enough. Let's see, Rodriguez loads up at the service line. Grimes is even having a hard time handling her. Jura Vicious gets stuffed by Harper Murray. No question about that one. Harper Murray setting this up beautifully, wrapping that left hand around so she's able to shut down the shot that Jura Vicious wants to hit. <laughs> was hit with some sass. Yeah. Harper Murray with a stare down <laughs> after the stuff. I love it. Grimes again, that's a nice pass off of a lethal serve. Rodriguez matches with another dig. Stark gets involved defensively and it's Merzik off the hands. Nobody can get there. Penn State will take their first point of set number two. Penn State so far tonight has had a little bit of difficulty getting that outside position going during set one. Cameron Hannon and Jess Merzik hit a combined 038. That is not good enough for Penn State. The rest of the team hitting above 200. Those left sides have to do better. What a serve by Grimes. Right back to Harper Murray it goes. That was a BB. Jillian Grimes has done a phenomenal job from the end line tonight, really picking apart Nebraska server receive, which is the toughest thing to do in the country. Nebraska has been aced less than any other team in the NCAA. Grimes going after it again. That one floats up and out. Nebraska taking back a two-point lead. That's a miss that you're okay with. Grimes still hitting it well in the seam and driving it deep, just missing about a foot out of bounds. Merritt Beeson. Back to serve for the Huskers. She's a lethal server as well. Keep a lookout for the jump flow. Merzik handles it early platform two. Nicely done off the hands and buries it down the line. Jess Merzik hasn't had the greatest offensive night comparative to where she's been at this season, but man, in the backcourt, she has been nails on service. He's really handling these passes so well, finishing them before she makes that approach into her swing. Not an easy skill to develop either, passing into hitting and transition as well. Nebraska right back at it. Harper Murray, like that one was going deep. Dug out by Grimes though. Bergen Riley goes right back out to Harper Murray and a big response from Harper Murray who was a bit quiet in set one. Nebraska needed a little bit more production out of their left sides, but if Izzy Stark is going to give them this easy of a tip to pick up, they have to do a better job defending, or Stark has to put that in a ball where at least it knocks Nebraska out of system. That dump was a little bit too easy. Harper Murray back to Sir. Two-point lead to Nebraska. Feldudo with a dime of a pass. Mendelssohn puts it away, cross-court on the slide. Mendelssohn's been fantastic tonight. She is six for seven, hitting over 850. She's been the difference maker for Penn State. Normally, one of their last offensive options on attack. She's doing phenomenal tonight, getting involved. Jess Merzik back to serve. Ava Feldudo in right back. Jillian Grimes in left back. Nebraska throws up a perfect pass. It's Andy Jackson checking back into set number two. Jackson has been great on this slide attack, doing a really nice job going behind the setter. Riley's getting her in a great position to run it. And that connection is nails. Kennedy Orr, the serving specialist, checks back in for Nebraska. That was a nice serve from Orr. As he start tested, Cameron Hanna loads up, it's alive. Oh my! Taylor Landfair stays in 
the play. That's going to get you some momentum on your side. Jordan Larson's up in response on behalf of her team. That's what defense does. It gets you hyped up. Harper Murray barely getting a hand under that ball. And Rebecca Alec diving out for that one. You can see why she had her tongue out on the last play. She was pumped. <laughs> Great dig by Feldudo. Hannah, oh, he's tested. She goes into the pin. Nebraska with their biggest lead of the match so far, up four on Penn State. Really good up by Izzy Stark, trying to get her hands on that ball and send it outside. Just ball location slightly off. Or with a nice run, she looks to continue it here. Izzy Stark goes to the back row, denied is Jess Merzik. And Rebecca Alec manning the net, timeout called. And Ava Feldudo tracks it down. Maggie Mendelson in the middle, what a dig for Harper Murray. Izzy Stark throws it out to the pin, makes it look easy. Cameron Hanna is dug up by the scrappy. Okay, Mendelson answers back, finally with a block. Penn State's first of the night. It has been difficult to come by because Nebraska's been in system and that's allowed this offense to be balanced, but out of system, a beautiful read on Penn State's side despite the great up for Murray. This long string ball allows that block to form and Mendelssohn puts it down. Maggie Mendelssohn, former Cornhusker, as we mentioned, not to harp on it. It's just always fascinating to see the inner dynamics and that serve is deep for Menger. Mendelssohn checks back into the lineup, and here comes Jillian Grimes, the scrappy libero for Penn State. I love the enthusiasm of a player like Jillian Grimes. She plays with so much fire. Yeah. I mean, she flies around the court. She's so much fun to watch, and she really takes charge back there. Is he start? Goes to the back row, Jess Merzik sees the opening and Lexi Rodriguez thought she got a hold of it on the pancake attempt. And the referees suggest otherwise. Caroline Juravicious checks back in for the Nittany Lions. Rodriguez trying to get that hand under it, but if any part of that ball touches the floor, it's called down. Based on that look, it looked like the front edge of the ball closest to the net might have flipped the floor, but Rodriguez's hand was under it. That's G. For Lanfair, she gets the touch, though, off the hands of Penn State. The precision it takes to get those micro touches, Lanfair does a really nice job with that high contact point, really going for fingertips. Olivia Mauk, the freshman defensive specialist out of Nebraska, checks back into the lineup. A star of the future for the defense of Nebraska. Izzy Stark back to the pin. Vicious is denied. Rebecca Alec. Monstrous at the net. Seven blocks for Nebraska, and we're not even through one and a half sets. This serve is putting so much pressure on Penn State. This knocks him out of system. When the block knows where the ball is going, it becomes that much easier to get the stuff. What a run so far for Nebraska. Out of system is Penn State. And wow, Cameron Hanna swings her way out of it with some extra sass at the end of that one, too. Oh, I love it. When they're getting a little chippy out there, it shows just how competitive it is. And all of these players just getting so excited. And she gets the warning. Come on. <laughs> that was last week. Let the girls play. I'm with you. It's not a contact sport. You got to let yeah, them get into on. it somehow. Cameron Hanna back to serve now. That's a nice float serve. Harper Murray handles it beautifully, and Rebecca Alec bounces that ball in front of Cameron Hanna. Nebraska's running this B set or gap set really well, going right between the two attackers. It's very difficult when the block has to both reach inside. It leaves that seam open. Yeah, that's a great observation by you, Emily. Lexi Rodriguez, the best liberos. All time for Nebraska with the serve. Jess Merzik fires one deep. This is where it becomes difficult because Penn State wants that touch call, and maybe they thought it touched the backcourt or the front row. But Katie Schumacher call is only down to one challenge, and do they risk it here in the second set? Probably not. Rodriguez again with a nice short serve, trying to throw Penn State off 
on their timing, and it works. Nebraska all over the read with their block. Nebraska's block has asserted their dominance. Penn State has to make the necessary adjustment and go up and over it. Testing it out isn't going to work anymore. I like the serving nuance, though, for Nebraska picking apart. The to hitting negative here in set two, and that is so difficult to do against the third most efficient team in the conference. Jura Vicious slapping that ball through the seam. It's down. Penn State gets the ball back. And exciting news for the Jura Vicious family as well. Recent commits Ava Jura Vicious, the younger sister of Caroline, recently committing to Penn State. Grimes back to serve. Harper Murray out of system and no problem. She bails herself out. That guy on the line changed his call from out to in, so there was a bit of confusion there. Yeah, just overturned on that ball. The up ref calling that ball in. She has the upper hand against the line judges. Katie Schumacher calling up thrills, but I believe the right call was ultimately made. Merritt Beeson with a BB of a serve. Right back out to the pin, Jess Merzik. Fires in a cannon. Harper Murray goes deep. It's handled by Jocelyn Nathan. Juravicious opts to tip it. Lexi Rodriguez read it short, and instead, Juravicious goes long. Juravicious has been absolutely outstanding. That's her seventh kill of the night. Izzy Stark is making it a point to get her going offensively against good blockers in Nebraska, but she's finding ways around it, which has been so difficult to do for all hitters all season. Ava Feldudo, the freshman with the serve. Nebraska handles it. Oh, my goodness. Feldudo eats it in left back. Smirks that one off. I would say so. Merritt Beeson. My goodness. And I love that Merritt Beeson has been playing backcourt for a few rotations. Check this out. I mean, it is coming with so much heat. It sounds like a hammer hitting a nail. I love that she has those back row attacks now. It brings so much more to this offense. Don't want to get in the way of that one. And that is a lethal serve off the hands of Harper Murray. This is a Nebraska team that we've seen all season, just efficient on both sides of the ball, offensively keeping the ball in play, keeping the pressure on the other team from the end line, and defensively, they're picking up everything. A little shift in serve receive for Penn State as Feldudo checks, excuse me, not Feldudo, that's Jocelyn Nathan checks back out of the lineup. Cameron Hanna back in, maybe looking for some offense in the back row too. Look out for it. Stark gets in a battle and is caught red-handed with her hand in the net. And one of the only things that Stark could do with that ball, it's overpass. She's trying to go up to save it, just getting a little bit too into the net. Harper Murray again goes short. Grimes digs it out. Nowhere to go for Stark. She throws it to the backcourt. Harper Murray throws in the tip. Ooh, collision course in the middle. They're okay. Nebraska handles it. Bergen Riley in full control. Taylor Lanfair powers one through. Cameron Hanna gets involved in the backcourt. And high ball to the pin. It's deep. Penn State survives it. How do they do it is the question. I mean, what a fun libero matchup that we're blessed with. Jillian yes. Grimes with such an impressive up to keep this ball alive and on Penn State's side. And then Lexi Rodriguez in the backcourt sticks an arm out for it to keep it up. Jess Merzik back to serve. Off the tape it goes. Harper Mur Murray dials it in. Andy Jackson throws in a tip. The first tip we've seen from her all match. And Jess Merzik responds with one of her own. What a dig for Nebraska. That's deep. Unfortunate for Laney Choboy, who threw her whole body behind that dig. Penn State survives another. You can see how intense it is in the backcourt for both sides. They are laying out for absolutely everything. It has been so difficult to have a ball hit the floor because of plays like that. And, and when you're hustle. throwing your body at a ball like that, you hate to see your team lose the point, as we can relate. Emily? Just disregard for their well-being. <laughs> <laughs> what a block from Nebraska. Cameron Hanna loads up again. Lexi Rodriguez makes it look easy. Out to the pin. Landfair rolls it in. Jess Merzik is there. Cameron Hanna fires in a tip, and Laney Choboy says it's up. It is. Ball is still alive. Stark tumbles backwards and keeps that ball in. 
All smiles on the side of Penn State, just how they drew it up. That's what you gotta do in broken plays. You just have to be <laughs> that much better. It doesn't have to be perfect. Sometimes you just gotta go up and take a rip. I love that from the freshman setter. What was now, what was almost a 10 point deficit now is just about seven. We have to have another look at the broken play we just saw. I mean, it's chaos happening <laughs> on both sides of the court. Everyone doing whatever they can to keep it alive. I mean, how many highlight real plays are we going to see from Laney Choboy tonight? She had defense. And Stark doesn't get that first one and says, okay, I got to be a little more aggressive on this swing. And it's like a face is just digging it left and right. I mean, a player like Lexi Rodriguez, if anything is within her side of the court on the left half, she's making it look easy and she's getting up. Difficult choice for John Cook to make after Lexi Rodriguez graduates. Who do you don as your libero next season? You've got great options, that's for sure, in Olivia Mauck and Lainey Choboy. Either way, it would be good to go. Nebraska needs five points to take the second set and even out the series at the moment. Kennedy Orr checks back into the lineup. She went on quite a run in her first service rotation. That's a nice pass. A little tight though. Stark trying to get a hold of it and could not. Penn State is overpassing too many balls right now. Izzy Stark needs to tell her passers, I don't need this perfect. Get me 10 feet off and I can still run my offense, but they can't do anything when the ball's that tight. Especially with as physical of a setter she is, that says a lot too. Or with another great serve handled by Merzik that time. Mendelssohn rolls it to the middle, and Landfair loads up big on the block. Stark forced to the pin. Cameron Hanna goes wide with it. Nebraska needs three to take it. Huskers just doing such a nice job forcing the pressure from the service line, really forcing Penn State in difficult situations. Serve handled by Merzik. Cameron Hanna loads up that time and gets high hands in a single block situation. Penn State takes another point. Penn State just has to chip away at this lead. Don't look at the score right now. Focus on the next play in front of you and execute at a high level because if they start making errors, this set is going to go very fast. Quinn Mengert, she has played in all 30 matches this season. Third on the team with 23 aces. Back to serve now for Penn State. Bergen Riley goes back to Rebecca Alec, who blasts it well out. Timing just a little bit off on that set. Riley getting the ball a little bit higher than Rebecca Alec would have wanted. Watch them to sure up that connection over the next point or two. Set up a beautiful serve from Menger. Landfair cranks it outside the block, and that ball's dug up, but out of bounds on the side of Nebraska. Penn State serve just really targeting Harper Murray pretty much all night long, forcing her to take the ball up high, forcing her to step in the seams. She's done a decent job of taking care of it, but Penn State is not making it easy for her. No, they certainly aren't. Bergen Riley back to serve now for Nebraska. Slaps in a floater. Back row attack, Jess Merzik. It is blocked by Rebecca Alec, the junior middle blocker out of Lincoln, Nebraska. It is a block party on the Husker side. They've already put up 10 blocks through just two sets, doing a phenomenal job shutting down Penn State's offense. <laughs> Trammell goes deep. And Nebraska takes the second set, 25-14. Your thoughts after the second, Emily? It was all defense for Nebraska's side, and what a bounce back from what we saw during set one. The defense turned on, and Penn State couldn't handle that pressure. Set three coming up next. We're going at least top ten wins so far this season. And look at the hit percentage comparisons by set to prove your point, Emily. Nebraska isn't even doing a great job offensively, but that's what it takes against some of the best teams. You might not be having the best offensive night, but that's because Penn State's defense is good as well. Penn State has to make the necessary adjustments offensively and swing higher and go for better shots, not down into the block because it is not working. This atmosphere pretty much says it all. Rec Hall, one of the most iconic venues in all of college volleyball. 
Cornhusker fans travel so well to just about anywhere. First serve underway in set number three. That ball is deep for Penn State, not the way they hope to start it. The left sides for Penn State have to do a better job. During set two, they were hitting negative 050. During set one, 038. So Cameron Hanna and Jess Merzik need to be a bigger part of this Penn State offense from here on out. Out with another nasty serve for the Cornhuskers. Penn State in some trouble. High free balling coming for Nebraska. Now sends it up. And Merritt Beeson makes it look easy in that opposite position. Beeson has such great court vision. She can see wherever the block is set up. If they're not in the perfect position to make this play, she can read it. Merritt really Beeson. tough service pressure from Nebraska, forcing Penn State out of system. And when Nebraska gets a free ball, all options on attack, it is so difficult to stop. Beeson talked about her history being from Alabama, said she was just grateful she didn't try out for the cheerleader squad. That was her only <laughs> other choice that she thought volleyball wasn't even in her peripheral vision and then took up the sport and said she comes from a football town. There wasn't a lot of options for her. She said she was just glad she didn't try out for the cheerleading team. I think we're all happy that she chose <laughs> volleyball. It's, she's yes. a blessing to watch. Nice jig by Lexi Rodriguez. Bergen Riley goes back out to the icon. Merritt Beeson loads back up. And at that time, it's Rebecca Alec. Are you kidding me? Jillian Grimes. Great dig by Mount. Out to the pin to Harper. High hands. That ball is out of reach. Nebraska ahead 3 0 in set number three. Penn State is not making it easy for Nebraska to put a ball down. They are having time and time again to keep taking swings. Because of plays like this, Grimes in the right spot and gets this ball up. But then Nebraska side, I mean, they're just finding ways to grit it out. Mauk is a tough server. There it is on display. Merzik says, get me out of this service rotation and does it all herself. 4-1 lead now. Really smart decision for Izzy Stark, the setter. She's front court. She has the option to take this over. Smart decision. Yeah. No block to show for there for Nebraska. Jillian Grimes back to serve now. Going toe-to-toe -to -toe with Mount. Jess Merzik keeps that one high for Stark, who sends it right back out to the pin. What a dig from Mount. Out to the pin. Merritt Beeson looks for the opening. It's deep. And Penn State right back in it. Beeson trying to hit that line shot, but doing a little bit too much, turning her hand down and her shoulders. That forces that ball out of bounds. Jillian Grimes, she's had a sensational outing tonight. Looking to tie it here for Penn State early. Merritt Beeson looking to swing her way out of trouble in a tight set situation. She gathers her team on their side. Tie game. Mary Beeson had a beautiful kill to open up the set. Since then, Penn State's made a great adjustment, keying that block in on her. A big serve from Penn State. Harper Murray went up with a purpose. That ball was going down if she had anything to do with it. Smart decision from Bergen Riley on this set. It's a very tight pass. You oftentimes expect the middle to get the ball in this situation. Riley uses her strength to push it over the middle and out. That leaves Murray one-on-one. -on -one. see Rodriguez loading up at the service line for Nebraska. That float serve goes into the net. And tie game continues. It's been a pretty low error night from the service line on both sides. They're doing a good job putting in pressure, but also finding that balance of keeping the ball in play. Ava Feldudo. Back to rival the serve receive of Nebraska. That was close to being in or out. Nobody knows. Harper Murray throws in the tip this time. Dug out nicely by Nathan. Feldudo gets a hold of it. And Merzik tries to go for hands. She does not get them. Nebraska's defense is frustrating the heck out of Jess Merzik. She is still hitting negative in this matchup. Normally, she's one of Penn State's best attackers. And yeah, what can you do when they have a full scouting report designated to the offense that you bring to the table? That's why middles are key for Penn State. They have to get some involvement there to open up the pin. And there's a big serve from Merritt Beeson. Izzy Stark. What a play. Oh, Andy Jackson gets robbed off of an incredible keep up. And Penn State, the wall.
perseveres. Beautiful ball by Izzy Stark, tracking this outside set so well, getting those hands in in time. That's why she's leading all other setters in the conference in blocks per set. She is a physical presence up front. Maggie Mendelson, this one's a two-sport athlete, played basketball, gave that up to pursue volleyball full-time. Harper Murray loading up on the pin now. Izzy Stark out to Cameron Hanna and denied. Andy Jackson, how high does she touch, did you say? 10-10. She added three <laughs> inches to her oh vertical my. in the offseason. That's how hard she was working to get plays like this, to soar up. I mean, look at the height that Jackson gets up there. It's so difficult to hit around it. Her armpits are nearly <laughs> at the top of the tape. Come on, it's unfair. That is a physical specimen. The six foot three sophomore middle blocker. Penn State right back at it. Mendelssohn gets the touch that she wanted. Landfair owns it. And we are. Continuing the tie set situation at six points apiece. This is more so what the first set felt like. It was a yes. back and forth battle all the way up until the end when it was 19-19. Penn State has to continue to play with Nebraska up until that point because set two, Nebraska went on way too many runs. The last team to beat Penn State on their home court was Nebraska last season, November 3rd. In a reverse sweep. Yeah. You gotta think Penn State remembers that feeling comfortable going up against Nebraska and all of a sudden, Nebraska comes storming back, and I don't know, this is pretty much the exact same Nebraska team that we saw from last season with the addition of Taylor Landfair in that second outside spot, but all these players remember that all too well. Kennedy Orr back to serve for Nebraska, a serving specialist. It's been in action in 28 of 29 matches this season. Deep float serve, hard to handle, but Faldudo does. Taylor Trammell loads up in the middle, and finds the hands to launch it out of bounds. Izzy Stark has to get Taylor Trammell going just a little bit more. She's normally hitting over 400 on the season, still hitting negative tonight, though. You can tell that reaction. <laughs> this whole Penn State team just in sync. <laughs> That's awesome. Hate to follow that up with a miss serve. Izzy Stark, her reaction responded accordingly. Sometimes I feel like the liberos in the backcourt give bigger celebrations because they don't get yes. their frustration out on attack. Yes, 100%. Punching left and right. <laughs> Lainey Choboy on Nebraska side, actually, she normally used to punch after points, and she started <laughs> accidentally punching people, so instead they make her run around. That's why sometimes she's not even in the huddle. She's getting too hyped. Live vicariously through <laughs> the bigs, yeah, as we call them. And Penn State will tie it back up at eight. Penn State still playing toe-to-toe -to -toe here with Nebraska, which is exactly what they need to do. Stark doing a good job this set, getting everyone involved in the offense. Yeah, that middle contribution is so key for Penn State in this matchup in particular. What a serve, what a get by Rodriguez. Penn State, Izzy Stark finds Jess Merzik, goes high hands, Rodriguez is all over it. Bergen Riley sends it to Merritt Beeson, and Izzy Stark was camped on the tip read. Deep off the hands, Harper Murray gets blown up, and Mary Beeson lines it up. Jillian Grimes is there through the seam. What a read. Jess Merzik fires one off the hands. Bergen Riley goes out to the pin. Merritt Beeson is stuffed. Taylor Trammell is there. This is Big Ten volleyball. A dogfight on both sides. Insane swing after monster swing. And the defense in the backcourt finding a way to keep the ball alive in the front court for Penn State, getting it done. One point lead, swings to Penn State. Cameron Hanna back to serve. Deep float. Lanfair handles it beautifully. And Alec is denied in the middle. Back to back blocks. Taylor Trammell getting big in the middle. The block had to turn on for Penn State. They only had one through two sets. Now, they're up to four total in this set alone, doing a much better job keying in on the bracket. A little bit tight, but that's great for Riley. She can get her middle going on those kind of passes. Rebecca Alec was emotional after senior night after Nebraska played their final Big Ten game at home. She says, my seniors are my why. And she plays with a lot of purpose. She pours into her teammates. Says, Game days are when we chill. Practices are harder than the games. <laughs> and Penn State will accept a tip off the block. Jillian Grimes entered this, the scene and a two-point swing for Penn State. 
Trammell barely getting the touch on this play. The precision just going right off the block of Rebecca Alec. A set by Bergen Riley from the 10 foot line, making it look easy. Jillian Grimes on the back set to Merzik. Where else do you go? It's up. Nebraska and the defense continues to shine. Penn State back to Merzik. How is Nebraska still alive in this rally? Nobody knows. Penn State will take the point. I think Harper Murray is arguing for a net violation on Penn State. I mean, earlier in this rally, how did that ball get up? Well, here's how it happened. Yeah. Merzik hammers this. It just rips off of Murray, hits Rodriguez <laughs> in the foot, and Mouth makes a last-second decision to get it over. And off the head of Harper Murray, Caroline Juravicious lets her have it. Juravicious is blocking so well tonight, setting it up so not only she's involved, but her middle is as well. Getting in the right position at the right time, knocking that right hand back inside the court. No love lost between those two. They've been going at it all night long. Jillian Grimes with a big serve. Rodriguez pops that one to the 10-foot line. A touch delivered for Harper Murray, who has had enough. And a reminder that both Nebraska and Penn State are just down to one challenge. So if they do decide to challenge it, they better be sure that there is going to be a call for that in their direction. Lexi Rodriguez back to the service line. Looking for three to help her team tie it. Big serve handled by Merzik. Mendelssohn is blocked by Andy Jackson. That ball read so well from the front court. Beeson going in to help on that gap set. Normally this set is so effective because it splits the middle and the right side. But when they're both helping, it becomes very difficult to get through. And we'll see the target. Rodriguez chooses this time. It's to Nathan who struggles with the pass. And then it's Merzik finds the opening. Harper Murray loading up now. It's in the middle. Jillian Grimes comes from out of nowhere. Unbelievable save by Jillian Grimes. The libero having the performance of her life in the biggest moment for her team. Grimes is allowing this offense to run as it is. She is keeping everything alive. You can't really score points on backcourt defense, but what she's doing is creating opportunities for her offense to go off and allow them to take swing after swing. Perfect pass from Harper Murray off the hands of Maggie Mendelson, who is there, but reaching to your point about the gap sets, and it's Andy Jackson who gets the kill, and Bergen Riley deserves a ton of credit. Now, both sides are really exploiting that gap set going between the two blockers, and it's been effective for both tonight. Aaron Beeson, a dangerous server in a two-point hole for Nebraska. Grimes handles the pass, spots the seam. Merzik puts the ball down where Beeson is not. Three-point lead for Penn State. Merzik made that play look easy, not doing too much with it, seeing the open spot on the court on Nebraska's side, taking a little bit of speed off and placing it perfectly. Jess Merzik battling her way out of hitting negative coming into set three. Seven kills and eight errors, and a lot of that to the credit of the Nebraska block there gobbling up any chance they have. Harper Murray goes down the line. Caldudo is there to pick it up. Cameron Hanna off the hands of Bergen Riley, who demands the defense to pick it up. They do. Murray goes off the hands. It's Stark back to Mendelssohn, who throws in some off speed. It's still alive again. Nebraska pulling these incredible defensive plays out of nowhere. And my goodness. They live and die by their defense. This is what defense does. You don't score points, but you give yourself another opportunity. Riley laying out for this ball, keeping the pressure on Penn State, forcing them to make a play, resulting in an error. Harper Murray, the ace leader for her team this season, back to serve. Deep float, Feldudo throws up a perfect three-point pass off the hands of Bergen Riley that time. Cameron Hanna throws it down. Good eye vision from Cameron Hanna, seeing where the block was, Riley not having that outside hand turned back in, and H Hanna used it to her advantage. Cameron Hanna now has six kills on the night to five errors, working her way out of a hole early from set number one. Quinn Menger back to serve. Senior captain from Virginia. Morgan Riley, silky smooth hands to Taylor Landfair in some trouble on the pin. Izzy Stark. 
all over the ring. Stark is such a good blocker. She sets it up so well, and she has so much strength in her shoulders. Such a good pr press back. Six blocks this set by Penn State alone. Just doing a much better job identifying where these balls are going and putting up two strong hands in front. Deep float serve, Harper Murray the target. Bergen Riley goes back to Jackson who's dug out, but it's why Jackson is an unbelievable athlete. It's one thing to get a touch on Jackson's balls, but with the force that she brings, it's another thing to control it and keep it on your side. And it's so difficult when she's swinging like that. Even in slow motion, it's coming fast. Force, the key word of that phrase. That arm swing is something else. Kennedy Orr, back into serve. Wow, it's a wicked serve too. Izzy Stark has one option, and it's Cameron Hanna. Baldudo back to Stark, who has no room to go again in a free ball situation. Oh, no. We have a player down for Nebraska. Oh, no. Keep an eye on that. Cameron Hanna goes big off the pin, and Laney Choboy is hurt. There was a collision on the court, and we hope she is okay. She has been excellent in this match all season long. The sophomore defensive specialist struggling. Yeah, visibly in play in the middle of your court. Both players just laying out for a ball. But look, Laney Choboy is as tough as it gets. I mean, she is not going to go off the court unless you physically pull her off. That's the kind of defensive pursuit that Nebraska prides themselves on. And how about the toughness of Choboy clearly in pain wincing and still saying she's fine and to stay through that rally as well yeah Oof, you can tell she's feeling it though and Nebraska's run will end there Penn State takes the ball back Izzy Stark back to serve we'll see where she goes She'll go to Laney Choboy, who was down, and Stark digs out a heavy attack from Bergen. Riley, and finding the opening is Caroline Jurevicius. Jurevicius with a nasty slice shot right in front of the block. She is doing such a good job seeing where that block is lined up and not doing too much, just hitting the shot that's open. Incredible angle. Yeah. Nobody's getting that ball back. Serve long. Izzy Stark, frustrated after that miss, wants to get that one back. Merritt Beeson back in for Lady Choboy, who is battling through something on the bench now with their trainer. Bergen Riley back to serve. Cameron Hanna pushes it to the outside. Caroline Jura vicious is everywhere her 11th kill of the night sometimes when you're on you're just on and that is caroline jura vicious tonight her hand is blazing hot and izzy stark is making sure to get her going in every possible situation bergen riley out to merit Beeson. can't find the Floor and Jess Merzik, and she is exposed in a double block situation. This is where Nebraska has to make a push. At that point, they were down four, now just down three. The defense has to level up to another point to try to slow down Penn State from here on out, and the Huskers have to play as clean as possible, hitting their serves well. Olivia Mauk back in for Nebraska, local Nebraska kid. Considered red shirting in this season. Decided not to. Good choice. That ball is deep. And why Nebraska climbing back in. All within sudden, two. All of a sudden the door cracked open for Nebraska. Just a little bit more. Penn State has to play clean in the red zone from point 20 on. It has to start now. Big serve from Mauk. Penn State out to the pin. It's Merzik dug up. My goodness, Harper Murray. What an athletic play at the net. Jura Vicious 
has been lighting up the defense and then two seasons ago 92,003 when they played at the football arena that was an incredible atmosphere Nebraska volleyball is up leveling the sport no question Penn State continues to rally Jess Merzik goes high off the hands Rodriguez out to Harper Murray it's high and it's high off the hands too wise play for the Cornhuskers Nebraska is finding ways to stay in this set, forcing the pressure on Penn State side and making plays on theirs. Lexi Rodriguez looking to catch Penn State in set number three. No stranger to pressured situations. This team made it all the way to the final national championship last year, fell short. That ball is going back to Nebraska. Back row attack called on Penn State. So Izzy start going up with her hands, although she barely jumped, she can't take that ball over. More so a defense mechanism, though, just getting her hands up in time. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Timeout called by Penn State as Nebraska inches closer within one. Lexi Rodriguez, their ace back to serve. What do you think makes her serve so difficult, given your defensive prowess yeah she's so good on serve because it barely moves there's almost no spin on the ball and hits the seams really well she also drives it back well and then will drop one in short well not to mention the serving prowess of Lexi Rodriguez but also the defensive prowess we've been talking about it all night and it goes with purpose look at how this Nebraska defense is making Jess Merzik look and that's an incredible offensive performer the key from John Cook was there we have to shut down Penn State's outsides this is how well Nebraska's done against the top 10 outsides in the conference limiting them to 179 and Jess Merzik was top five in the conference in kills per set hitting negative that does not happen very often for a player that can completely take over matches for Penn State Nebraska's defending her phenomenally one attacker they have not been able to key in on yet though is Caroline Churavicious 12 kills five errors hitting 333 against her former team hitting with purpose and on the other side Nebraska running a really balanced attack right now and doing a nice job of taking Penn State's middles out of the equation as well to put that pressure on Jess Merzik there on the pin I think John Cook the ultimate strategist you can see him picking apart the service e with where he's zoning his serving targets I think what Nebraska's doing well is defending the players that they knew they had to, which yes. is Jess Merzik, Cameron Hanna, and Taylor Trammell. What Penn State's doing well, though, is players are stepping up. Maggie Mendelson and Caroline Juravicious are having some of the best matches of their entire career so far at a time when it matters most for the Nittany Lions. Just her season, averaging 1.7 kills a set. Today, she's got 12 <laughs> on the night, hitting 333 out of her mind. That is wild in the contrast. Oh. Wait, add another, Emily, she heard you. Look, My when goodness. you're feeling yourself, you're just feeling yourself. That bleeds into how you play. When you get a little bit of confidence going, it is contagious. You find ways to make big plays, even if you haven't been doing it all season long. They get 13 kills for Caroline Juravicious. Her sister recently committed to Penn State. Her father played football here, continuing the legacy for the Nittany Lions. Merritt Beeson has something to say about it. Grimes keeps the ball in play. Merzik goes over with it, and what a spot to choose. Very wise to exploit that right back position. Grimes keeps it alive. Merzik goes to Rodriguez. It's dug up. Berg and Riley out to the pin. Harper Murray trying to put an end to the situation. It's wide. Penn State is two points away from taking the third. When it's tight, when it matters most, Penn State has done a great job of finishing. During set one, it was tied 19-19. Penn State went on a run to do exactly this, go up 23-20. to Nebraska has to make the difference and respond. Andy Jackson loads up in the middle, as she always does. What a set by Bergen Riley again. No blocks to show for on Penn State side. Massive response in a moment when Nebraska needed it most, nailing the pass and getting one of their most efficient attackers going. Merritt Beeson back to serve. Look out for her threat as an offensive attack in the back row, too. Deep court serve into the net. Set point, Penn State. Those are the plays that just cannot happen on your side when you're trying to claw your way back in the set and ultimately the match and let your opponent go up to set point. Have to play cleaner in these big moments. 
Jess Merzik back to serve at set point. Hauk tries to handle the pass. Mendelssohn gets up big on the block, and who's there? But Andy Jackson with the wide open pick. What a confident swing to take in this big of a moment from a sophomore middle blocker. That shows you how confident Jackson is in her play. She is so much fun to watch in the front row. It's such a versatile athlete, too. Not many shots she doesn't have in her arsenal. Harper Murray back to serve in the most pressured situation. It's a deep float rocket to Jess Merzik out to the pin. Cameron Hanna, the chance to close it out. And she will. Penn State takes the third set. They are one set away from clinching a share of the Big Ten title. What a response from Penn State. They lost the last set 25. Tonight's advanced chat is brought to you by DirecTV. All eyes on Cameron Hanna in the big moment so far. She has seven kills on the night and is stepping up big when this team needs it the most, Emily Eamon. It came down to those final last kills that Penn State needed to close it out, and that's when you look to your veterans, to your fifth year. This was set point for Penn State, and Izzy Stark got her the ball. It was a difficult situation, but the confidence that Hannah had to swing at that point, even though she's not having the best offensive night, those are the plays that you need in the big moments from your veteran stars. Speaking of big moments, Emily, the only two Penn State attackers that are hitting over 111 are the two Nebraska transfers. Pretty Come. wild stat line there. Coming up in the big moments, and you've got to think it's just a little bit extra juice added to those two players, Mendelssohn and Juravicious. Nathan with a big serve to start for Penn State. Merritt Beeson goes for off speed. Izzy Stark loads up the pin. Jesse, Jess Merz, excuse me, has been overloaded out there on the pin. Juravicious missing the block on the outside against Harper Murray. A little bit of an inner rivalry developing between those two. Much better swing for Murray on this ball. Penn State had six blocks during the last set. Nebraska had to make that adjustment of using the block better, going for the edges of it, not hitting down into it, because Penn State has shown that that block is there. Rodriguez back at the line. Crimes doing anything she can to keep that ball up at the 10-foot line. Merzik in jail at the net. Stark goes right back to Merzik, and she finds a way to get it down the second time. How, how does she do it, Jess Merzik? She's got a double block on her every single night and a giant target on her back, and what she continues to produce is so impressive. She just has an incredible motor. She knows it might not be that first swing, but she has to stay in it and take swing after swing to get it done. Oh, oh boy. Oh. Izzy Stark took an awkward fall. On her way back to dig it out, and seems to be okay. Everyone looked to her with panic on her way to the board, saying, don't do it. Not worth the risk at this point in the year, but just took a little bit of an awkward turn and fall. <laughs> you can see Megan Hodge easy on the sideline in despair of what she was about to see. And the icons of this Penn State program, Juravicious. Goes on the tip and a net violation called on Nebraska. These are not common things we see for Nebraska. Yeah, the Huskers are a very disciplined team. It is not often that you see them going into the net or making those mental errors, those undisciplined errors. Penn State put together up there. Full control. That is six foot five. In your face, the junior middle blocker shining against her former team. Big swing for Krause, and that's what Nebraska also has. They have depth. When one player goes down, they've got another. Coach John Cook calls them game changers. Doesn't call them bench players because they have to be able to come in and change the game. This is what Lindsey Krause is being asked to do. Can you go in and make a difference for the, for the Huskers? Well, and it's not easy to play that role, especially no. in your senior year for Lindsey Krause. Credit to her, a Nebraska kid that just loves and takes pride in the program. Izzy Stark, meanwhile, the freshman setter, playing like a senior for Penn State. Just such a high volleyball IQ from the freshman. She knows when to make these dumps and make them effective. And this one identifying the block in front of her and just going around it for the kill. Izzy Stark has no fear in her veins. Both parents played college volleyball at a high level. Sister Angelina plays for the team as well. Great feature on them on Big Ten Network. 
you're interested, great finishing touch by Lindsey Krause. I'd say that's a game changer to come in and rattle off a couple of kills for your team. Matt Krause coming in and changing the game. She has to be productive as an outside attacker. The pins right now for Nebraska are not hitting at a high enough clip to get it done. Krause has to change that and take really strong, confident swings around the block. Bergen Riley back to serve. Harsh crowd in the background, and Merritt Beeson thought she was gonna clock that one. Ava Feldudo gets it. Oh my, Penn State survives it. Ava Feldudo saves the point. Defense for Penn State has been absolutely outstanding tonight. They are flying all around the court, doing whatever it takes to get these balls up, and especially in these coverage plays, just surrounding the attacker, giving them more opportunities to keep taking swings. The degree of difficulty on a dig like that is not to be understated. We've all been there before, including myself in this gym, to be admitted. That was, it didn't end well for me, Ava. Me, me neither. <laughs> Did a really nice job there, getting her platform out and just really? digging that ball up. Most players that come into this gym, you're really just not used to <laughs> winning in a place like where I call it. it is one of the toughest places to play in the country. It is. Mauk with another big serve. And Jura Vicious commands the tip off the block. She gets it. Carolyn Jura Vicious is really showing off her versatility tonight. We've seen her rip balls down the line, cross court. She's using the block well, though, as this match has gone on, seeing where it is and going right off of it. 15 kills for Juravicious, hitting 417. Maybe not what the scouting report had identified for Nebraska, per your point earlier. Rebecca Alec, back in the mix. She's been a little bit quiet here through sets three and number four. Nebraska needs a little bit more middle production if they're gonna continue to hang in this one. Jackson right now is hitting over 600. Rebecca Alec, over 300. They have to get the middles going when they have the opportunity on a good pass. Jump float serve, Rodriguez pockets one, and Jura Vicious pockets another kill. Nebraska's trying to take out the right side attack. This is why Rodriguez threw in this short serve to disrupt the route of Jura Vicious, but it didn't do anything. She still ran the route that she wanted and got the kill. That's how on fire she is tonight. Her season high was 11 kills against Louisville earlier this season. She now has 16, Caroline Jura Vicious, originally from Cleveland, Ohio. Started her career at Nebraska, ending it here at Penn State. As a part of the number one recruiting class, as I mentioned, in 2023. Or excuse me, a couple years prior to that. Merritt Beeson back to serve now for Nebraska in a tie set situation. Izzy Stark grabs it. Oh my, Jess Merzik takes no prisoners at the five foot line. Harper Murray standing in her way. What a shot from Jess Merzik. This right thumb down action. Izzy Stark leaving this ball inside. Just a flashy set from the setter. One handed to give Merzik that ball. Harper Murray's lucky she got those hands up. Yeah, behind. look out for that one. Big swing, Andy Jackson. Doesn't matter how you do it, takes one off the tape. Laney Choboy checking back into the lineup. She got dinged up in a seam defensive play in the middle of the court, seems to be okay. Harper Murray back to serve now. Choboy in left, er, excuse me, right back. Grimes. Gets it, Rodriguez answers the bell. Another big dig from Feldudo. Stark was there on the block. Bergen Riley out to the pin. Oh my, <laughs> Lindsey Krause denied by Izzy Stark. Izzy Stark plays well beyond her years. She reads the game so well. She knows when to go up, how to go up, and get that middle involved. Beautiful hands on that block. Few players more happy about that block than her sister Ange on the sideline. And in the feature from BTN, they describe Izzy as the guard dog for Ange. Oh, yeah. Ange is just a nice, go happy, go lucky. Not that Izzy isn't, but the younger sister is the guard dog of the older sister. Yeah, it, that dynamic. Izzy's very protective <laughs> of Ange, and she'll she'll tell you that right away. I mean, she's a little bit more fiery than Angelina Stark is. There she is on the sideline cheering her sister on. 
A little more intense, her mom described it as. Oh, yeah. Big serve for Moore. What a pass from Faldudo. She's been rock solid in set four. Out to the pin, and Krause's denied. Bergen Riley running out of options. Harper Murray gets loaded up out of the back row and gets the kill. Nebraska takes the one point lead. Another back and forth battle. We saw this in set one and set three. It was tight up until the end, then Penn State made the push to close out both sets. This is where Nebraska has to find a way to either go on a run now or not let Penn State go on runs later. 10th kill for Harper Murray of the match so far. Izzy Stark out to Cameron Hanna. Wow. Cameron Hanna's heating up, and that is not good if you're a Nebraska fan watching this match because Hanna has the ability to take over. She's had 12 straight matches with 10 or more kills. Continue to add it up tonight. She has done phenomenal for this Penn State team. It's that ball at such a high point. What a reach for Cameron Hanna. Maggie Mendelson stays on the floor for the jump, or excuse me, for the floater serve. Goes off the pin and is deemed out of bounds. Jillian Grimes back into the lineup. A spark plug on defense. Bergen Riley back to serve for Nebraska. Jess Merzik was the target, and Taylor Tremel gets the touch. Nebraska actually called in the net on that play as well, so another undisciplined play on Nebraska's side. They need to play just a little bit cleaner and not allow Penn State to just rack up points off of their errors. Izzy Stark back to serve now. Lexi Rodriguez is on it. Alec out of the middle, and Jura Vicious is there to defend it. Cameron Hanna heating up, and it continues. Tenth kill for Cameron Hanna. Cameron Hanna clawed her way out of hitting negative through the first two sets. She has flipped a switch and has become a go-to option for Penn State when they need it most here in this fourth set, trying to clinch up their first Big Ten title since 2017. Well, and credit to Jura Vicious, too, for creating the opening. The block is a little bit more hesitant now. Izzy Stark pushes it back to Hannah again. Oh my goodness, Cameron Hannah. That set from Izzy Stark was one of the best that we've seen all night long. She is off the court on the right side for Penn State, and she flicks her wrist back using her strength, pushing it all the way out to allow Hannah to go to work and hit a beautiful shot. A little bit of off speed from Krause. Stark goes back to Jura Vicious with the vicious attack. 17 kills. Caroline Jura Vicious might be bidding her campaign for MVP. The crowd erupts. In Big Ten Volleyball on the Big Ten Network is brought to you by State Farm. When you want the real deal, like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. What an atmosphere tonight. Sellout crowd inside Rec Hall. These fans have been craving a Big Ten title for more than seven seasons. And right now, Penn State potentially on the brink of a huge upset to claim at least a share of the title. Another point for Penn State. 16-12 a lead for the Nittany Lions. Penn State looks as confident as I've seen them play all season, and that is dangerous when you're playing a team with that much confidence and momentum, feeling that good, trying to get a title. And block for Trammell. Bergen Riley finds Rebecca Alec, and that was another sensational take from Grimes. Unfortunately, could not be paid off on the pin. Great block by Nebraska. But Nebraska is going to make a push. It has to start now. You cannot allow this gap to widen. Big shutdown for Rebecca Alec in a moment where Nebraska needed it most to continue to chip away at that lead. Malk in a high-pressured situation. Three-point hole. That ball might have been going deep. Hannah played it anyways. Lexi Rodriguez digs it up nicely cross-court. Off the hands goes Harper Murray. 
Beautiful. Great players take big swings in the big moments. Harper Murray is exactly that. It doesn't matter the score, especially when it's tight. She's gonna continue to take monster swings because she knows you're not gonna win this match tipping. Taylor Trammell finds the gap in the block. It goes down on Nebraska's side. Stark has done a much better job as the match has gone on, getting her middles involved. Mendelssohn and Trammell have gotten much more involved, especially here in set three and set four. That's been a big difference maker for the Nittany Lions. Cameron Hanna looking to build on a three-point lead for Penn State. Penn State wins set four, and they are Big Ten title holders. Rebecca Alec has something to say about that. The ball was called wide. Rebecca Alec is dumbfounded by the call. John Cook only has one challenge left. And it looks like he's going to use it. Joseph Gustafson, our down referee, will check in momentarily to clarify the situation. What do you think? Here is Joseph. The original call is out, no touch. Nebraska, Nebraska is challenging that the ball was either touched or in. All right, we will keep you posted on this situation as it unfolds. Here's another look at the play. I don't see, oh, I do see a touch. I think I see a right pinky touch on Trammell. Let's have another look. After review, I the I ball saw was in. The call is reversed. Nebraska gets the point and keeps their challenge. Okay. In regardless, I do think I saw a touch also. But you're also allowed to bundle those calls. Good challenge taken by John Cook. Still has one more remaining, as does Katie Schumacher calling for Penn State. Well, when you've been doing it for this long, John Cook seems unfazed. 25 years at the helm for Nebraska. He told us in conversations leading up to this point that he gained some wisdom along the way. Different challenges are what keep him going. Each season, you have to reinvent yourself. And he does the best job at that. I mean, think about how he has evolved as a coach. From 2012, Emily, back in our playing days, maybe my playing day, not so much yours, but just his evolution as a coach and his adaptability with a new generation of players. He's a TikTok star now. <laughs> the biggest thing was trying to be relatable and really get to know his players on a deeper level. That's been the biggest difference to get the most out of them. Jura Vicious went up with a purpose. 18-15 lead for Penn State. How do you describe what is happening right now for Jura Vicious? I mean, she is playing out of her mind. There's some matches that are really a defining moment for a player to really step up. This is Caroline Jura Vicious' defining moment, hitting over 400, leading the team in kills against the number two team in the country on her way to a title. Andy Jackson trying to silence the Penn State crowd. She has been Excellent offensively, her 10th kill of the night. Just a sophomore, too. What a bright future ahead. Many years to come in Lincoln. Merritt Beeson, back to serve for Nebraska. It's a dipping float serve. Stark pushes it to the pin, a little bit off the net, and Jess Merzik has nowhere to go with that set. Looks a little bit frustrated there. Timeout called by Penn State as Nebraska looks to tie it up on the serve of Merritt Beeson. We've got several points left in set four. What is at stake tonight is a Big Ten title on the line, both sides. Nebraska wins tonight. They clinch the outright title. Penn State wins tonight. They would clinch at least a share of the Big Ten title with Nebraska, who has one more match left tomorrow against Maryland. So, 
All the pressure on the side of Penn State right now, trying to close this out against one of the best teams in the nation. And Caroline Jerevicious happens to be having the match of her life with 18 kills, Emily. The match of her life at a moment when Penn State needed it. Nebraska was keying in on Penn State's outside attacker. So Jerevicious had to be big tonight as their right side. And she's not only delivering, she is dominating up front, finding holes in the floor that you don't think exist against this Nebraska defense. She is playing outstanding, willing her team to a potential Big Ten title. And wouldn't this be significant? The place where her dad played football, where her younger sister is going to be coming. And I know that Katie Schumacher Cauley doesn't want any part of this to be about her, but I know that these players are playing for something deeper than just a Big Ten title. They want this badly as much for themselves as they do for Katie Schumacher Cauley in her third year as head coach, battling cancer on the sideline, showing up for her girls day in and day out. Merritt Beeson will continue to serve. A chance to tie it here for Nebraska. Laser beam of a serve, Grimes goes to the pin, oh my. A little ambitious, it's still alive somehow. Nebraska is alive, Penn State. Gets a better setup to Merzik. She's overloaded though. Nebraska's block is reading it. Harper Murray goes big to high hands. She gets the call. Touch is called by the down referee. And Nebraska ties it at 18. This is the point in the match where Penn State was able to pull away in set one and set three. Nebraska has to be different this time around and not let Penn State go on a run. They have to extend this lead. That's another tough serve. Merzik having a hard time handling it. A slide attack by Caroline Juravicious. One point lead. Swings to Nebraska. Momentum fading on the side of Penn State. 4 0 scoring run on Nebraska side. Penn State has to play cleaner than that. They cannot hand Nebraska points from here on out. Both sides keep the ball in play. Beeson in a high pressure situation. Merzik throws the platform out early, and Maggie Mendelssohn looks for the touch. And Juravicious is sure that there was a touch there, as well as Maggie Mendelssohn. Katie Schumacher Cauley was convinced as well. We'll take another look at it. I'm not sure the I saw it live. Out, no touch. Penn State is challenging a touch. Oh, yeah. That's a touch. That's as clear of a touch as you can see. Bergen Riley gets that left hand on it. Watch the, the thumb flick up. No doubt about it. There's a touch. Great challenge taken by Katie Schumacher. Call again. She only has one challenge right now. Could have burned it, but really great call on the sidelines identifying that touch. Well, a crucial time to do it, too, because this yeah. swings in the other way, and we've got a 19-all situation and a perfect time to take a break, I think, for Penn State to just try and regroup. Meanwhile, on the other side of Nebraska, John Cook just kind of see, <laughs> sitting on the sideline. Here's Joseph. After review, the call is reversed. There was a touch off the setter's left hand. Penn State gets the point and keeps their challenge. So Penn State still has that challenge left. Crowd is informed of the decision. 19 all in set number four. It could be the deciding set for Penn State from the way last season ended. This is a perfect test at hand. In State College, Maggie Mendelson barely gets a hold of it. What a dig by Choboy. Stark finds it. And Alexi Rodriguez gets another highlight reel dig. Krause is denied. She covers herself. That ball is over. Valduto pops it up. It's tight on a free ball. Oh, my. One-handed set. Are you kidding me? Izzy Stark. Highlight reel plays on both sides. First, Lexi Rodriguez on Nebraska's side. Incredible up in the backcourt. Then for Penn State. I mean, Izzy Stark making it look like she's a seventh year on the team. That is a freshman making a one-handed set for Merzik to go up and crush. She was in jail at the net, Izzy yeah. Stark. No room to go. There's the testament to the physicality that she possesses in the front row. Nebraska 
takes a break off a miss serve from Jess Merzik, who has barely missed so those, far. Those are the serves that you cannot miss either. When your team gets that momentum, you need to hold on to that as much as possible. Nobody knows that better than Jess Merzik. Andy Jackson with a wild and effective serve to Grimes. Cameron Hanna loads up. Jackson in the back row. And Harper Murray finds the back row. Grimes is on the tip. Early read for her. Back row attack right back at you from Jess Merzik. Stark goes back to the pin. Off the hands. Harper Murray with a big dig. Bergen Riley goes back to Alec. It's wide. No touch to show for Penn State. Back on top by one. The margins are so small in this game between winning a title and losing a title. It can come down to one swing. Playing as clean as possible is so important from here on out. Morgan Riley goes back to the back row. Harper is denied. Great coverage by Choboy, gets out of harm's way. Krause goes deep down the line. Great defensive play by Merzik, gets still alive. Hannah keeps it in play. Another dig by Menger. Taylor Trammell throws it into the middle. Where's Bergen Riley gonna go? To the pin. Krause gets denied by Izzy Stark and Taylor Trammell. This is what Big Ten Volleyball is all about. The defensive intensity, all-out battle on both sides. The Wrecking Crew is alive and well tonight. All 6,000 plus of them. They have been deprived of a Big Ten title since 2017. And Penn State needs two to take the match. The defense has been the difference for Penn State. They are making it impossible for Nebraska to get the ball on the floor. That backcourt is locked in no matter who's been back there, frustrating the heck out of the Husker attackers. Rarely do you ever see Nebraska in a scrambled situation. And Penn State has made this a full team effort. Caroline Juravicious with 18 kills. Izzy Stark pulling sets from out of nowhere. 45 assists for her. Jillian Grimes, 12 digs. 10 digs from Jess Merzik. Still battling to get above hitting zero right now. And John Cook looks frustrated with a Big Ten title at stake. He knows what's on the line here. Nebraska still in it, but running out of time. Quinn Menger back to serve for Penn State. <laughs> Murray throws up a pass. Krause. Dishes it into the center of the net. Match point, Penn State for a chance to clinch a share of the Big Ten title. Krause goes big. The hands to Nebraska alive and well. They need two to tie it. In comes Merritt Beeson. Bergen Riley back to serve. Highest pressure situation so far of the season for Bergen Riley. A poised athlete facing a match point on the other side. Valdudo is tight. Stark wanted the touch. She did not get the call, and Katie schumacher Colley is challenging. 
Joseph Gustafson. The original call is out, no touch. Point Nebraska, Penn State is challenging. There was a touch. Okay, wouldn't that be an anticlimactic way to end it if there is a touch, we'll see. I don't think Penn State fans care one way or another. Based on this look, it's tough to tell whether you can see a tip off of Alec. It doesn't look like it from this angle. And you have to have 100% evidence to either confirm or reverse the call. This might be a better look at it. Oh, that view I see maybe. Oh my, I don't envy the referees in this situation. Looks like it might clip Becca Alex's middle finger. Is it enough though to overturn it? This call gets reversed. Then Penn State would indeed win the Big Ten title here. And the biggest challenge of Katie Schumacher Colley's career. Just like the best look that we have on it. Based on the looks that we see, I don't know if there was enough to reverse it or confirm it. The referees do have looks that we don't have, so they also might see something that we can. I wish a replay was an option here. <laughs> the whole match rests on this decision. Joseph Gustafson hard at work. He wants to be 100% sure either way. And there's a hopeful fan base on behalf of this Nittany Lions team. And speaking with Katie Schumacher Cauley before this, she said, I love these girls. I just want them to enjoy the moment. Enjoy this. And surely they have tonight. Moments away from a verdict here, folks. Here it is. After review, the call stands. Nebraska keeps the point, and Penn State loses their challenge. Stands meaning there wasn't enough evidence either way to confirm or reverse that based on the looks we saw that looked like the call. And there you hear the passionate Husker fan base in the background. Okay, so it is either going to be a tie set situation or Penn State could still win the match here and a Big Ten title with it. Valdudo nails the pass. Stark goes big to the pin. Cameron Hanna closes out the match, and Penn State has done it. They have clinched a share of the Big Ten title, their first since 2017. secures a title. What a storybook ending for this Penn State program that was fighting for the last seven years to get this title back with a head coach who has been fighting on and off the court and this team to rally behind her and do just that means more for this Penn State team. It's a great way to put it, Emily. The 18th Big Ten title in Penn State school history. Katie Schumacher Cauley has done it. This team and a whole lot of fight and a whole lot of belief in a group that was squaring off against a team that had yet to lose a match and really stumble at all in the Big Ten and still claimed a share of it for Nebraska. 
But this celebration says it all for the Penn State Volleyball Program. Penn State Volleyball is back, and it is back with a vengeance. Caroline Juravicious with 18 kills on the night, hitting 414 overall. A full team effort, all hands on deck to claim a share of the title. Back to Hudson again, and she's blocked. Hey. Hmm. Are you going to? 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 Even if you Poor with the game, Anasara Matigala, Panga, the Alahana Payer, and the Nacheri Poor. You let your work out when the other Nala Payer and the Supra Payderla. Nothing here, it's an anger. Now, I'm not going to be able to get the umbrella. Pomble, Papa. Pomble, Papa. No, no, no. 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 No, no.